So quizzes are a great way to do formative or summative assessments in your classroom. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to click on modules because I organize everything through modules. And I'm gonna choose the module that I'm gonna put it in. So I'm gonna add this quiz to practice key and on the drop down menu, I'm gonna choose a quiz and choose new quiz. And I'm gonna call this pre-key quiz. And I'm gonna add the item. All right, so when I click on the title, it's gonna allow me to edit the quiz. Um, I'm gonna come up here and choose the edit button. And so the first tab, if you notice, there's two tabs. The first tab is really the logistics of it. So in this box, I can include any directions. I can upload. Maybe I want you to watch a video and then answer questions about it. Um, I can upload an image. I can upload um, a website link. I can upload a document. Whatever you want goes in here. Um, I don't usually mess with these first two tabs, but then here's all my options. So shuffle answers is where... All your answer options stay the same as far as where the, what the options are, but it puts them in a different order. So that allows students um, to not necessarily say number one is A. Um, and if they retake it, it's not going to be the same answer every time. Um, time limit, I like to utilize, especially when I use a quiz for my do now at the beginning of class, I'll set a seven minute timer. And so the second that they log in, they have seven minutes to answer it. So that allows me to kind of move along quicker with class. Um, allowing multiple attempts, you can change the settings here. Do they get to keep their highest score, their most recent score, or the average of all their attempts? I can also edit how many times they can take the quiz. Um, if I don't want them to have more than one attempt, then I leave that blank. Let students see their quiz responses. Um, that allows them, once they hit submit, they can see and scroll through the quiz and see their answers, see their correct answers. If I choose this or I can take it off and they don't know which ones they got right or wrong, um, they just get a score. And then also I can, this is kind of cool, I can only let them, I can restrict when they can see the correct answers. So maybe I set it for the end of class. And so I, everybody has to have submitted their quiz before. Um, showing one question at a time is a great um, option, especially for some of our students who are overloaded sensory wise. It really focuses, especially if your quiz has a lot of text involved with it or if it's longer. Showing one question at a time is nice. You can also lock the question. So that means that once they submit question one, they can't go back to question one. So they have to move through, through the quiz intentionally. Um, requiring an access code is really just setting up a password. And so that's kind of a great way if you're using quiz as like a summative assessment that they have to know the password in order to get in. So like they'd have to be in class that day to know the password. Um, and then down here, you can assign it to certain students. You can assign it to everybody. You can put a due date on it so it shows up as late. If they miss the due date, you can make it available. So like, I don't want you to be able to see it until we have key on Thursday. Um, so I'm gonna set when it shows up as available, like they can actually log into it, and then I can end when it's available. So I'm gonna come over here to questions once I choose all of my logistics. And I'm going to choose new question. Question group is great. It takes a lot of front loading. And if you're interested in that, I would be happy to help you with that. But it's, it's a great option. I would get really comfortable with quizzes to start with before you move into that. So I'm going to call this first one question one. Um, and I'm going to make it multiple choice. And I'm going to ask, what day of the week is key? So these are all my answer options. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm going to add another option, Friday. So if you notice, the green arrow is clicked on Monday, indicating that that's the correct answer. So I'm actually coming down here and click that Thursday is the correct answer. And then this is kind of cool. You can add comments depending on whether the students get the question right, wrong, or just in general. 
The gray one is just a general comment. So if you just wanted to make a general comment to students, whether they got it right or wrong, um, if you wanted to make comments to students who got the correct answer, you could click on that and say, great job, or something like that. Or the red is you can leave a comment just for students who get it wrong, where you can clarify things. Um, I know in the past, I've, like, I've used that where I'll take a picture of my, if I put a problem on there, of my worked out problem and the solution, and I'll upload that picture there. So if students got it wrong, they can go back and look at my work and see how they did. So I'm going to click Update Question. And then I'm going to go back and keep adding questions. Um, I'm going to, you can vary the question type. So I'm going to include a different video with the different question types because there's some um, HTML type stuff that you have to type in with certain questions. And so I don't want to overwhelm you with that in this video, but I will include it if you want to see it. Um, my final step is make sure to save and publish or just hit save if you're not ready to publish the quiz yet.